medical radiologists, cardio, uh, cardiovascular surgeons, and brain surgeons love to show their work uh, in images, as it turns out. And uh, But they're aware of HIPAA limitations, and what's happened in the real absence of any uh, messaging system that's acceptable to doctors, doctors just used SMS. And they know they're not being compliant with HIPAA requirements, and they do it anyway. They say, well, I need to communicate quickly about a patient. I'm going to do it because it's important, and I'll take the risk. And they, they disguise the patient information, even patients, you know, the classic lack of identifiers. You know, the lady in 202. The doctors have been doing that for a long time. And when, um, when the first version of Medgram came along, modeled on Instagram, the idea is, well, we'll just revolutionize the system from the bottom up. We don't, we don't care. We, we'll just use it, and it'll grow like Topsy, and that was kind of the original idea. The original founder was a medical, Stanford medical student. He went on to rotation, his first clinical rotation, they handed him a pager. He said, what the devil is this? What am I supposed to do with this? You know all the stories about pager. So anyway, so doctors are generally disappointed with mobile apps in any case. Uh, for example, they hand you an iPad, and you can look at your patient's uh, vital signs and their EKG and all this stuff. Well, iPads are not convenient. Cell phones are too small. The enterprises have just totally missed it. And uh, in fact, I'll tell you a story. There's a well-known uh, mobile app that's available in the healthcare system. And the CMO of my local hospital, if you go onto that app, it shows him, do not disturb. The last two to three months, he says, no, no, text me <laughs> or call me, you know, kind of thing. As, as SMS is inefficient, sometimes it literally takes hours. I'm telling you even overnight to get an SMS message that people expected to be transmitted quickly. When the first mobile version uh, came out for Medigram, we started using it at one of the local hospitals here in the area, a very well-known private hospital. And uh, we could solve a clinical problem, I'm not kidding, in 90 seconds. I'll give you an example. I had a patient who showed up in my office. I'm a practicing neurologist, serial CMO and chief of staff. And but I'm practicing neurology. A patient shows up in my office to be evaluated for her mild Parkinson's at 4.45 p.m. Well, you know what happens at 5 p.m. The offices start closing down. So I, I'm evaluating the patient. I feel her pulse. So I've taken her blood pressure, and she's got, a new, she's got atrial fib, obviously. New onset atrial fibrillation. So um, I determined to send her to the ER, where it's going to take her a couple hours to get evaluated. So instead, I text, I use a metagram to text my local cardiologist, who happens to be her, one of her doctors. Uh, I've got your patient so-and-so, it's HIPAA compliance, so what the heck, I use the name, EOB, everything. I've got your patient in my office, she's got a new onset atrial fib. Uh, what should I do? You know, I, I should send her to the ER, right? And you can see her. He says, sure. He get text me back within eight minutes. Sure, I'll see the patient in the, I'll meet her in the ER, send her over there. Uh, the alternative is two hours of messing around trying to work. He wasn't on call that night, so I would have had to call his own, you know the story. So call his answering service, work through the fact that he's not on call, use a pager, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. And it's gonna take a couple of hours. Patients parked in the ER. Uh, maybe at some risk to her, actually. So that's pretty typical. So anyway, so the early experience with Medigram was that kind of thing. Patient with a severe headache, he's uh, 75 years old, his MRI's negative. Click, click, tap, tap, tap. What's his sed rate? Oh, oh I, I didn't do that. I'm looking for inflammation of the arteries around the hip cranial arteries. So that kind of stuff is very routine. If you had physicians highly networked with an efficient mobile system, my theory is it would improve the efficiency of the entire system in ways that are almost unpredictable. As a CMO, networking is not a theory in the sense that what if I've got a, what if I've got a length of stay issue uh, with my uh, patients between a transition to a skilled nursing facility? So length of stay is a big issue. Uh, what if I've got coding issues? So coding, uh, see, uh, uh, coding improvement kind of activities would be a key kind of area to interact okay. with doctors. So that kind of related stuff is totally crucial to the enterprise from a financial standpoint. And I can tell you that for every 
for every uh, improvement in coding that just uh, ratchets down a little bit to like point uh, five basis points is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars per month for a medium-sized hospital. Well, so rapid communication about sepsis. So let's suppose that a, a doctor is communicating with a nurse. The nurse says, patient confused, has an elevated temperature. It would be fairly easy to apply a, to use the phrase, artificial intelligence kind of system to pick out those kinds of phrases and alert someone to the possibility of sepsis. Bottom line is that from the standpoint of an individual practicing doctor and from the standpoint uh, of an enterprise healthcare leadership issue, improving mobile communications could be a key to improving efficiency, safety, and uh, finances of a hospital system. So uh, I think there's a strong case to be made for that.